the United States of America is the most powerful. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. See? The United States of America is the most powerful nation on earth. Period. <laughs> All the talk of America's economic decline is political hot air. Well, so is all the rhetoric you hear about our enemies getting stronger and America getting weaker. If you doubt America's commitment, or mine, to see that justice is done, just ask Osama bin Laden. Oh, oh, oh. God! <laughs> Russell, he went on to say, taking shots at people sitting there, he says, uh, the only people in the country who, keep, who get to keep their jobs for 30 years are sitting in this room. Right. Like, he was going at people. Well, did he talk about Citizens United? Because the whole country got one major problem. There's no democracy. There's only money. Yeah, mm -hmm. he definitely everything talked we talk about, money. about What we getting ready to talk about and everything. I occupied Wall Street for a reason. Because this country is run by money. And, and, and Citizens United allowing corporations to just go crazy. And they even further extended that law to give them even more power. Is, a, is the reason that the prison industrial complex exists in the way that it does it locks us up and changed our culture from now for, for people listening right now Russell Citizens United That's is a collective of individuals corporations who can fund their their own political agenda exactly and that agenda and that's always, like the Koch brothers and exactly it's where it's it's where the politicians uh, depend more on money than people and it allows them further power to give even more money so that politicians are beholden to money. And so every single thing that affects, ill affects the American people is some corporation figured out new ways to exploit the people. Today I'm talking about my book. That's right. And what, what's the title? Really the book quick. is called A Happy Vegan. That's it right. It just came out. And it's like, of all my books, I, I can't say it's unhappy because it's, well, it's written in, in, a, in a light spirit. But there's a lot of information in there. And it's like... When you eat chicken, you eat Prozac, you eat antibiotics, the kind you need that may protect you against some bug one day that could kill you. You eat growth hormones. You eat so many carcinogens in your chicken. In your beef, uh, if you barbecue it, it could be like a third, of, if it's 30 of protein, it's like 20 cigarettes a day. No one gives their child 20 cigarettes a day. And this kind of food product is only manufactured. These lives are only built and based on this much chemical and these many... Um, um, additives in America because it's illegal to do that anywhere in the world. 20% of American women, black women, I'm sorry, have some kind of heart disease. If you're over 20 years old and you're black, you're 50% likely to have some kind of heart disease. And the animal product that they serve you is only the way it is, is because of lobby. They allow, they allow uh, corporations to feed us this. And then the, the American government gives them $30 billion while giving the vegetable industry only $17 million. So they give $30 billion to the factory farming industry, which is destroying the planet for sure. Yeah. Well, and, a lot of the, and the livestock also, they say, is, de is destroying the planet as well. because all the, of, all the cows farting is like more than all the trains, planes, and automobiles. Yeah, put that's together. like a real thing. The ozone layer is being destroyed by the gas of cows. Yes. That's right. Plus, they're cutting down the rainforest and all these places to yeah. find places to put the cows. Everything, kid. A, a hamburger. Yo, if you if you don't eat a pound of beef, you can shower for a year. Right? A year you can shower. So whenever they say, oh, like, I, it, it pissed me off. Wait, what up. do you mean? If you don't say The amount of water to feed a cow and to wash a cow and to build a grain and all the stuff it eats is enough to float a battleship. One cow. One hamburger, you can shower for six months. Does that make sense? Uh, so, like the, the process. Yeah. yeah so, the, the, the everything the involved, water in, required for it. Got yeah. It. So it's about right. how much water it takes just for you. You to can eat feed one so beef. many people. Now, Russell, so I'm that's like, what your, the book's a book, little bit about. That your you know. book, Happy Vegan. I'll. Uh, I always tell people when they talk to me about being a vegetarian, I say that you need to understand your blood type first. Is that true or false? To some degree, but yeah, that's not true. There's so many. I mean, only thing you need is B12. Got it. Because there's protein everywhere. So, you know, that idea you need protests, that's but you can get protein from it, plants. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All kind of plant-based protein. Because I always say, can you get enough protein from Absolutely. plants? Absolutely. You get too much protein mostly if you eat a lot of meat. And um, what you do get is a lot of carcinogens. 
and people are dying. Like I went, it was real funny. Uh, uh, recently, I went to uh, AJ when he was laid up in the casket. I'm looking at AJ, and it was cool. Uh, Curtis Blow, DJ Hollywood, Eddie Chiba, Love Bug Starsky, Busy B Star, all the old school rappers, the pre rap record. If you don't know, dudes. if you don't know who AJ is, AJ is a famous DJ who DJ for Curtis Blow. Right. So these all these pre. Uh, Pre hip hop DJs and rappers was there, and AJ was up in the in the casket, and I was there, and it was a sad day. We all, but we were all reminiscing and being happy, whatever. But the same week he died of ass cancer was the same week that Did you Joey just say was, ass cancer, colon cancer. I'm sorry, hip. Is that a curse? <laughs> no, that's no, fine. It's, it's just, just a little. The term felt a little crass. Of course, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. But that's what he died of, and all so right. did Joey <laughs> Robinson the same week. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh yeah. really? Joey Robinson the same week. Two hip hop icons died the same week of of uh, animal product, and it's constant. And it's more and more, and uh, the heart disease. The, the, the rate of diabetes three times more than the rest of the world, the rate of heart disease, the rate of cancer, all that is the animal product that we're feeding ourselves. And there are companies everywhere, Beyond Meat, for instance, or Hampton Creek. Beyond Meat is studying the 40,000 plants to create new products. Like once you had a car, you need a horse to pull a carriage. That's the kind of thing that we're working on, but in the short term, there's still many, many products you can eat that are not animal-based that will allow you freedom, you know, to move around, you know, and not die of ass cancer. Ass cancer I'm saying, so I don't know what to say about but it. Anyway, feel, that's, it Russell, can I just call so the books I just feel like just heavy right now. No, 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 no. I, I know Happy Vegan ass. is available now, and I will challenge everyone listening right now, because mostly what I run into, um, I mean, the people on this program will tell you I'm pretty hardcore. Not as hardcore as you are, but about what I eat. I oh, haven't good. eaten beef since the 90s. I wasn't raised on pork, but I do eat chicken. A lot of it, and I still eat fish. There's a lot of pro, uh, a lot of a probiotics lo or antibiotics. antibiotics. But more yeah. than the antibiotics, the Prozac is crazy. They gave it Prozac because they, you know, they put them in such tight quarters that they gave them Prozac so they wouldn't kill each other and so they wouldn't be depressed and die anyway. Uh. And then they found out, oh man, the Prozac makes them fat, so they stuff them more Prozac. Like you can't get Prozac, you can't get antibiotics if you think you might have something. They got to triple check. But they stuffing you with antibiotics in your chicken. From, from the chicken. 85% of America's antibiotics go into the meat. Oh, that sounds insane. Now you have, and the reason I bring this up is because you have people listening who find their joy through food. Through junk food specifically. Whether it's fast food, whether it's soda, whether it's ice cream, whether it's brownies, whether it's having a big steak. Whether There's people who literally their happiness in the day is the, the meal that they're changes gonna, though. I no, learned that I stopped. Like, I like morning meditation more than I do late night drinking. Or drugs, or coke, or dust, or whatever it was. Whatever, whatever late night used to be. And you did it all. all. of them. You yeah, did it every all. drug. They didn't, they didn't make a drug. Only thing I ain't tried is crystal meth, cause I wasn't around yet. I missed it. Man, right? too bad. But uh, <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> so I'm saying, but my real, but my real joy and happiness, and my, my biggest high comes in morning meditation. So I'd rather have that. That you know, cause all you want is to quiet the mind. We know that. We go to work every day to do things so that we can be at ease. So if we can promote, you know, ideas, work it out, meditating, all these things promote uh, a quiet mind. And a quiet mind is all we're seeking, period. A comfortable seat and a quiet mind, that's life. So you, you get high, so it's cloudiness or clarity. So you do things to promote clarity, and that's the other route to happiness. And, and, and the drugs and the alcohol is a temporary fix on all that noise in your mind that causes sickness and sadness. Yeah. Russell Simmons, Happy Vegan is the book. Um, he comes up here with books very frequently, and well, he's trying. Well, and the reason I say that, not that's not a, a shade. That's just to say that you're trying to contribute to people having a better life because yes. you've made mistakes in your life and you've learned, and now you're sharing. Exactly. I'm old, you know. I realize this as an activist. How old are you now? I'm 58. Right, so, I, so as an activist, I'm lucky to still be able to talk to you, right? Because, you know, I notice when I have a march, and I'm locked arm in arm with Nas, he's still relevant. And then I'm locked arm in arm with Eric B. or Salt and Pepper or, you know, great artists whose voices are not as big as they were. And when they were young and really big and successful, it was not on their agenda, just as it was not on my agenda. I used to say all I wanted was cocaine and... I cocaine and, 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 sex, vagine, and sex and vagine. You you right, were you were a fiend for the vagine. Right, that's all I said <laughs> before, and 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 I never really wanted or realized my opportunity, what celebrity gave me in terms of a voice. So now I'm still breathing, and I can still talk to you guys. So I say things 
that I know that you know that our, our people need to hear you know as much as I can you know so that's in your family um I think uh from what I know uh your niece Angela Simmons is vegan, vegan. yeah that's right uh who else Rev is <laughs> he's not vegan but he's changing even though he got a cooking show I he called me uh, talking about the green juice he drinks he used to say it's like you fell in the grass my nigga and then you just scraped your mouth against the grass <laughs> that's what he was saying about green juice uh, yeah. so bad. but he really said you know what a little apple is kind of good this was the other day he called me and told me that I was real happy to hear him say that I now guess Runs, put on, are runs put on some weight he's put yes, on some weight yes and he's lost a little bit but his, it's a new thing to him a new diet he read my book his wife read the book first and made him read it and she did and she, she have a health scare get? Is she vegan too? No, but it's no. a shift that's going on in that family, and I'm very proud to see that. You know, because most of your family don't listen. They're the last ones to listen. Of course. Right? You can tell your, your brother or your close close friend something, they just look at you. Now, what about your daughters? My daughters are in boarding school in a place where the animal product is not produced the way it is, and they're not vegan yet. But, you know, I, the difference between the American factory farming industry's poison and animal product that's grazed, you know, or made a different way is so dramatic. It should, I mean, it's not even the same food. You know, it's not the same food. And so it's not as unhealthy. Some people say, well, but yet in instances where you don't have animal product as a main part of your diet, there's less cancer, less heart disease, less, I mean, not even factory farmed. I mean, just regular animal product. It causes all of these complications, but a lot less than they do here, obviously, in America. Do you, um, one last question. Happy Vegan, Russell Simmons, the book is out. We got to talk about de Blasio and your relationship in your letter before we get, get you out of here. And I want to talk about Rush Card, too, because, you know, something that we, I mean, I want to just say there a little was, bit There was a little that. screw up in the business, yes, right? Yeah, I want to talk about holidays, it. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. Um, but on that, have you, um, and do you, uh, support local farming? Because I know that's very big. Local farms, organic farms is becoming a very big thing. Um, are you investing in that? Are you studying that? No, no, no. I, I'm aware that, you know, that non-GMO um, product and organic product and even animal product that's made on farms that are local and then raised a certain way are more healthy. But you would need enough grass to, to circle this earth four or five times and nothing else and no people just to serve the cows that we have. So 99.5% of what we eat uh, that's animal product coming from factory farms. Even our fish is full of antibiotics if it's not full of mercury. I mean, if it's factory farm fish, it's got a lot of growth hormones and a lot of antibiotics a lot of, and a lot of stuff in it. So there's a, there's a whole set of problems. And we talk about it in the book. It's a very simple book. My, book. my daughter told me when she was 11 that success through stillness was remedial at best. Yeah, she, I remember you talking about that. And she said that, you know, so I write a simple book. So this book, The Happy Vegan, is very simple. It's a real guide. And also, this idea that you think that, that it's expensive, when you can save $4,000 a year by going vegan and eating, you know, we show you lots of easy ways to move around and not, uh, you know, this idea that you can only go to the store. If you're stuck in the hood, you know you can get tofu. You know you can get uh, the Chinese restaurant can give you curry eggplant with bro broccoli and all I'm that. There's you, lots Russ, of ways around. Russ, I'm telling you that the level of discipline that many people are not prepared to have yet, where they won't find joy in food for several weeks. As several they weeks. That's all it is. Because you know it's happening. Because that transition. Your taste palate changes. Even like, you know, if I want to eat something like that's not really good for me, for instance, I could be in one of these high-end restaurants, like Craig's in L.A., for instance, that's a real, that's a, but they got a vegan chicken parmesan, they got vegan this, vegan that, right? They also got a chocolate cheese cake, chocolate peanut butter cheese cake, and chocolate peanut butter uh, ice cream with chocolate syrup, and it's vegan, so you eat that, and if your man's got the real chocolate cheese, let me tell me, you, you try it. You can't even eat it. It's so thick and heavy. You know, so it changes. Your taste palate change. But it will take you a month, at least. Yeah, but you know what I mean? But, but that's what diet, you're telling you know, people. 20 years early, I think it's a good move. You know what I mean? Because or, or worse than dying 20 years early, moping around for 20 years before you check out. You know what I mean? Being sick and the doctors and the constant. Because uh, uh, you really, people are really getting sick early. Black women are getting uh, uh, diabetes at an alarming rate and heart disease at an alarming rate. And, you know, you, if, you, if you're stuck in the hood, you got to go to Taco Bell? Go to Taco Bell. Get beans and put guacamole instead of cheese. 
and make a burrito, whatever. You know what I mean? There's ways around this that you, like you said, it'll take a minute to get there, but it's only a minute. My book's a guide to make it a couple days, you know what I mean? To slow it down and also to give you the benefits and choices that, that are healthier. It's not just going vegan, it's, you know, being healthier. Sugar's like cocaine, it's addictive. You know, be careful. Yes. Sorry. Ooh. Right, it's like the most addictive thing he on the planet. You didn't see State of the Union last night. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm going to tell you this. It's Peace Week is this week. What is I'm that? I'm sorry, Erica Ford just said Peace Week. Hey, Erica Ford, Queens, what up? Peace Week this week. Um, which is a, a very big important because there's definitely gun violence in New York City. It's Absolutely. Crazy. I'm sorry I, I cut you off. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, I think that's very important. I'd love to. Yeah, Peace Week. Rush Card more. supports it every year. We're going to do it again this year. We write him a check. And this year, now because of our mishap, uh, I've really been able to convince the board to invest a lot of money around the country in peace programs. We always did, you know, but, but we're you gonna gotta put, step your game up. Yeah, it's gonna go in the millions. Now, what times, happened so. with the rush car? You, well, people, uh, people we had, had money had, they couldn't get. Let me say that we had partners, and 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 I don't want to. I, I took all the bricks myself. They have hundred billion dollar partners. I don't want to fire them. I want to sue them. They, they actually been good in their intention, but you know we didn't do it alone. In fact, we don't even do that part of it. But so. We think that that's good in a way. We're going to, first of all, overpay, not only whatever they, we, we have to settle a deal, all the lawsuits. I'm happy to go through all the the, um, the process of studying what, what happened because the more investigations, the more we can release that to the public and see what happened. And they also will blame other people, but I'm not blaming nobody. But the people who are partly, I think that we can get big companies to force us to do some of the innovation that I've been trying to do. Like we do card to card transfer when people used to do Western Union. 90 cent, you send your mother money. She wakes up with the money on her card in Jamaica. You know what I mean? That was a big deal. Um, <clears throat> giving people their money two days early was a big deal. I have a lot of other innovation. Giving people $5, you know, just for leaving a couple of dollars in the bank. It's a big deal. It's bigger than the bank. So we did all those things. But I want people to swipe their card and be able to buy a house. If you've been swiping your card paying rent, you should get a mortgage. And the credit unions have been resistant to this because they're bank bank inspired and the banks don't really like the way we built virtual banks. So I want to make them accept our credit information. And if they don't, I'm going to build a rush credit agency or maybe I'll name it with my partner. But I'm going to get big partners. I mean, I say big. Our company is a multi hundred million dollar company. I need a hundred billion dollar company to get behind me and make them do it. So that if you have a, a rush card or any of the cards that would be competitors that followed us into this business and they have a long, they don't have the credit history we have because we have people for 10 years. Those people who've been productive and have paid their bills on time should be able to buy a house, buy a car. They should have a different credit score. To be able to get a loan. Of course. Now what happened And they've been trying to now shut what? us down on that for eight years. I've been fighting. Yeah, they to don't want to let you do that. But they don't want, they don't do want that. you to own a house. They don't want you to own a house. And they don't want you, Russell Simmons, hip hop mogul, to be the first guy to transition this, from making rap I built music. This industry. To I having, invented this industry. There's competitors, but I built it. But they don't want and, you. They and they, they the they's don't want you to have that. Well, they can't always stop me. And I think they are gonna be on my side in doing this, those who are moving into this industry because a lot of people they didn't like it and then they said well we better figure it out because a lot of Americans middle class and others are using these this form of banking like my daughters are in another country but they got rush cards and I can watch them very closely and what they're spending now the screw up was what people had their card they there had was money on their card and they couldn't use the that's card. correct because there was a trans there was a transition of data and that transition of data got screwed up and, and when that happened, everything shut down. And when one thing shut down, it created a tsunami effect so that other parts of the business shut down. Usually when you transfer data, something goes wrong, something else goes wrong, you see it because of call center. Mm -hmm. But when a call center that gets 3,000 calls a day gets 600,000 calls because 100,000 people didn't get their money. In a few days, it was only down to 10,000. Then a few more days, it was down to 2,000. So 2,000 people, 2,000 people not getting their money out of a million, no matter how many, on Instagram, it's like, and, and never mind on Instagram, it's just 2,000 people that you should care about. I call a lot of these people personally, sent them money personally, you know, and some of them might not even been telling the truth. They had me on the phone because I was so twisted. I should have called. I needed a couple of dollars. I wouldn't have believed you. 
<laughs> but uh, but uh, but I mean, it really it really was a moment, you know, probably the most devastating moment in my um, in my life. But of course, we're up and running perfectly and all that. That's good. But but they're we gonna drag. Be they better. are gonna drag you through the mud because they don't want you to win. Exactly. Oh yeah, they dragged me through the mud already. But you know what? Um, I don't want to put nobody under the bus because everybody else has the power to make me better and make me a better servant of the community. So what I want to do is get them not only do i want to pay off whatever the bills are and you know in terms of because to give everybody money but then i want to give extra money i want to be the gold standard of restoring the people because somebody didn't get their medicine on time and that person had to pay more money mm. or somebody lost their apartment even if they was only locked out of their car for three days yeah that's they enough. couldn't pay and it was that's last enough. minute for them and Four so somebody there. so those people i want to me- restore them too not the way ma bell says oh yeah you know, electricity went out and your fridge went cold and you lost your food. They just like, oh, wait, it's electricity's working. Shut up. I don't want to do that. I want to put food in your fridge. I'm, I'm going to Fl- Bell, I'm going to Flint, Michigan, anymore, right? and every Bell. rush card person is going to get water. Everybody. All, I don't know how many, 2,700, 3,600, whatever the number of people in Flint, Michigan who have a rush card, they're going to get fresh water. Well, that's Flint, a small Michigan thing, fresh water do- anyway because I hear the government over Th- there was poisoning their water. That's yeah. right. So I'm going to give them fresh water until that crisis is over. So that's a the small go- the thing. governor or the mayor of Flint did something with the water. So well, he, he uh, wasn't Michael, able to fix it quick enough. He wasn't able to fix it and the water got poisoned and kids started getting sick out there because they switched the water supply for some uh, most supplies. importantly. I want to challenge everybody else too, who is a service provider in that community, to add I can't give everybody in Flint, Michigan, you know, bottled water for, for, for three months, but I can give my customers that. I would like for other people to join me. I don't want to po- call them out, but everybody got cable, everybody got something. So give them some water. Make that part of your agenda to give relief to that part of, the, of, the, of the, uh, that state. So Russ is going, uh, Mr. Rush, Russell Simmons is going to fix the Rush card and anybody else. Fixed it already. It's, it's, already fixed. it's already fixed, but you're going to fix it. I'm, I'm going to make good on. I make, make good on everything. I promise. You, know, uh, you and uh, Mayor De Blasio, you wrote I, him an open letter. Yeah, well, yeah, I, you know, I, I feel this way about. I mean, Bill, Trump. I wrote a letter. Or uh, excuse me, Trump. You wrote a letter too. Yes. Yeah, I, you know, I, I feel that it'd be great if he won the Republican nomination, but you know, it's funny because he, he can twist his words. A lot of, a lot of unsophisticated Republicans. A lot of Republicans are like, yo, if he's, I have to vote Democrat because they're afraid of what might happen, right? But a lot of unsophisticated Democrats could start hearing his Democrat rap. He said one really good thing from the podium. He said a lot, he said money. And he looked around, he said, makes a lot of good people corrupt. He's talking about everybody on the podium. You heard Mr. Farrakhan say he looked like a little girl that did dress with, with short dresses. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what they are. They're all auditioning for more money from the funders of our government and, and, and the rulers of our society, which are the people with money and power. And they're all auditioning so they can get more money and maybe get in office. And they say it's for a good agenda, but then those people don't give them money for nothing. So Trump is one, just like Bernie Sanders, who are living, Bernie's living off little investments, right? And he's not accepting or getting any corporate support. So he is another person against Citizens United, which is where you give, and against this structure where money rules our government. So the two candidates have a lot in common, Hmm. but you know, his, I mean, he says a lot of rhetoric and not only his uh, homophobic and and Islamophobic and and, uh, sexist and, 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 and hateful racial racial stuff. Not only that, he says the other stuff that's just scary, like putting the pushing buttons on. Did he reply to you when you wrote that letter? He didn't. I haven't spoken to him since. That was, and he was. We were cool. And you guys have very done, cool. You guys have done business together. No, no, we just traveled a lot and partied a lot. And I went to his wedding, and I, you know, we. What do you mean you say very cool? And then I mean you say very party. cool. Like we would speak all the time. Yeah, but Russ, you know about Russ, what, Russ, you said. Very cool. Very cool. Which means you guys have definitely Rev been. was even cooler with him. Rev would travel every weekend with him to Mar-a-Lago. Him what's, and his family would go to Mar-a-Lago. To a place. He had a house in Mar-a-Lago. I figured out based on the way the sentence was structured. That Yo, Mar-a-Lago. 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 But Trump had a house at Mar-a-Lago. Sometimes where rich people go? <laughs> Very rich people go See? to this country club in Mar-a-Lago. And where he, is it was Mar-a-Lago? Some Mar-a-Lago. Room. It's, in, it's in Florida. Oh, it's in Florida. So you get on that I've big 727 before. and they would go. I would go sometimes. I went a couple times. But Rev would go all the time. And you know, it was like... I get along with everybody. Roger Ailes from Fox News. Uh, the reason we got the Rockefeller drug law done is because I was cool with the Republican governor at the time. You know, I get along with people. You know, and sometimes they say stuff and I be looking at them like, really? And they believe it. So the, the way to change people is, is if you want to change them or it, the way to just get along with them and understand that they believe in their views and you believe in yours and, you know, be tolerant. 
You know, I'm not an angry vegan. You can eat steak, but you know, I'm, I'm not. Even if I was a tr- trying to fight slavery, I'd probably be the person who'd be like, "Could you understand?" Well, other guys like John Brown be chopping the head off. I'd be like, "Don't you understand?" But I would always like to see somebody chopping the head off because I know that that's important. <laughs> you know, I like Peter throwing stuff on people, and then I call him and try to explain to him what a comic disaster it is for 100 billion animals to be birthed by factory practices and raped and made into like just not even they're not lives they're just things you need to make bigger and faster and you have to just suck their boob until you just get all the milk and if the milk ain't right just electrocute them until they stand up and get more milk i mean that's the lives of these factory farms mm. and you never can't even see that you know you go to jail filming that yeah they won't let you in i pay mer- i get mercy for animals money every year they go undercover and they risk their lives just to take pictures of what's going on you take a picture in here you can't go to jail for taking a picture of, of us doing our work. But you can go to jail for taking pictures of the way our food is served and made. Mm. Think about that. That's, That's crazy. Real. Right. They call them terrorists. How about that? Just for taking pictures of it. So, um, so you you and Trump have not talked. Not um, at all. Did you think that his campaign would last this long? Because I definitely Nobody didn't. Nobody thought that. I Get thought he would be done by the holidays. Of course. Everybody thought it. But, you know, you we're finding, I think that people kicking and screaming who feel that um, they they feel strongly that that uh, the world is changing towards so much tolerance uh, for people, a black president, so many so much gay rights discussion and changes and marriage and gays and and all kinds of a pro- progress uh, health care moving towards a real health care system like everybody else in the world has where everybody can be taken care of. All of these things that are progressive, that are ideas that they don't like are happening so quickly and Obama ushered in a lot a lot of that work along with you know uh, a mindset of the public that these people feel locked out and they don't have a voice so they they are really kicking and screaming on their way to the grave uh, and he's their voice like the Tea Party he's the Tea Party's voice mm-hmm. so it's a small it's a it's not a small part of America it's bigger than we thought and that's sad but it's not it's not uh, 50% of the Republican Party, but it's enough to beat eight people to death. And if he were to win the Republican nomination, then even Bernie Sanders could beat him. And that would be good for all of us. You're, are you going to vote? Absolutely. And who are you going to vote for? Well, today, if you were to vote today. If I were to vote today, I would think I need to vote for Hillary to win. And I would. I have a letter written <laughs> that I haven't given out yet. It's like uh, a letter. It's to Hillary, who's my dear friend. From, I gave her first fundraiser in New York State. Um, and the, the family, the Clinton family, been, I've been very close to them and appreciative of a lot of the work they've done. And uh, But like I have supported uh, Dennis Kucinich in the beginning because he was such a progressive. Like I even liked, I took John Edwards to yoga every day and we talked a lot about, he said poor people. Obama said, when are you going to say poor people? It doesn't poll right, you know what I mean? And why don't you go to Mississippi to announce where they're suffering? Maybe they're white people suffering the way he went to New Orleans to announce. John Edwards eventually got caught up and twisted out in a lot of stuff that Obama would not do. But the point was, I did endorse the guy who's going to win and do a good job for America. And I would do the same for Hillary. But she is also entangled in so much money and hadn't said a word. Some people got to play by the rules, but then want to change them. Like they said, you can't occupy your rich. The rich can help the poor. The rich can change the rules to make it a more even and, uh, you know, to talk about the one-tenth of one percent making all the money, that's a discussion. Hillary, bring that up. Borrow from Bernie. And then you'll be the complete candidate. You know, and, borrow and d- ideas that Bernie has. We fantasized yesterday about her bringing Bernie on as her vice president. Never would happen, but it would be fun. It would never happen because she's a centrist when it come, when it finally comes in the middle. When she gets to run. That's what we were saying yesterore yeah, yeah, she's, like, she's more she's truly Republican than we would like to. Yeah, she, and a lot of her belief system and a lot of her politics, because I don't even know her belief system. I don't like the brick. But like that's that. dangerous that I, people I, I feel like, that way. And that well, somebody that, like you on the inside feels that way, that you don't really know what Hillary believes. That's dangerous for I, her. I believe that she knows her agenda is to work for the people who elect her. And a lot of that is progressive. But I also believe that she wants to get along. And I don't believe she wants to shake things up. And she's not talking about the fact that money is putting her. She's got all this money. She raises more money. money than everybody. And, you know, that money comes from people who want favors. That's right. Right? So the favors that, that destroy, you know, whether it's the prison industrial complex, 
that's destroyed the fabric of the black community by locking up innocent, diseased people. You know, Jenks got hit with 25 years. Mm. He had 80 grams of coke that he talked about. He didn't have. He had He had a conspiracy theory. Uh, and this Jinx, the juvie, was an artist that you saw. Artist I, he was 15. He got shot. I raised him. I put him in college. I did everything I could. He got shot four more times. He was just in the hood. It was struggle, right? But he didn't change too much. But he was became a, a much better person. And he had a record on the radio a little bit. Y'all spun the record enough time to make him go out there. And he was in a conspiracy theory. Uh, conspiracy uh, charge to sell 80 grams of coke. 80 grams of coke, like my rich friends in St. Bart's, they'll bring 80 grams of coke on the island, right? And then they'll hoard it because it's not enough. Like them and them friends, like, yo, you know, nobody can handle this coke because it's not enough. It's only 80 grams of coke. Yeah. So he's selling 80, and they, and they get caught with 80, with hair on under their nuts, and another friend who owned a bunch of hotels, a good guy. He had a problem, yeah. But he had a whole lot of heroin on his nuts. Yeah, it's, it's worse when good people go cocaine. down because they have heroin he had on their everything. Nuts. He got on a plane traveling. They sent him to a rehab. They give they my put, man twenty five years. He's not rich, man. No, he public defender had him sign something, and now I got to figure out how to get that twenty five years down to ten years. I can't leave him there for twenty five years. He's he's thirty now. I raised him since he was 14, 15. Mm. But, but, uh, yeah, but your point is, is Hillary's involved in a lot of yeah, money. taking money, money from corporations and things like that. We love Bernie, but you don't think that Bernie will move things forward? What's the problem with Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders don't look like the president. I hate you think to it's say his it. look? I think his, his look, and I think that a lot of powers that be can't control him, so he's going to have a money issue when it comes down to fighting these Republicans. He might gain support. You know, uh, not from big corporations, but a lot of people, donors, as if he's because he's raised a lot of money on people writing ten dollar checks, and Americans could give him. A lot of young people love him. I'm surprised Black America doesn't realize that he has their agenda at heart more than anyone by far. Well, he did a bad job communicating that at first, you yes. know, and he didn't he didn't put across. He, he came across as very. Uh, he ain't do the nay nay though. No, nay, nay. And that's, that right. irritates me, too, because you, you have the these black blogs yes. that too much, too many of our young people, and even up, upwards of 40 and 45-year-olds are running these black entertainment blogs every day to get their information. And they're getting pushed information that's just... You get Trump on those blogs because they know that it gets clicks. Right. But you're not getting the information that you really need, which is the people like Bernie Sanders who don't have the money because a lot of these media outlets exactly. are really just funneled by ratings and money. So they're not going to talk about the Bernie Sanders stuff. I'm going to end up working for Hillary, travel around the country. I feel that. I feel like she's going to win the nomination. But what are we going to do gonna to keep Bernie in the conversation? Bernie is keeping himself in the conversation and not endorsing her for one and, and getting friends to be careful and hold off until such time that she adopts. Because the president had to say, for me, I told Valerie Jarrett, he got to say that he understands the prison industrial complex is destroying us and we need to do something about it right away. And then he went and did that vice thing and did those interviews and went inside and had those conversations. He did all that stuff, but he waited until last year. Right, was to late. change first-time offenders. He had to wait till a second term because first-time offenders were being charged instead of uh, instead of uh, educated, and that was a horrible thing. And he waited until recently. He waited until Justin Bieber tweeted it. Honestly, we wrote a, I wrote a letter. It was signed by everybody. All these celebrities, Angelia Jolie and Brad Pitt's type people, but also NAACP and Urban League and Reverend Jackson and Sharpton and the Drug Policy Alliance. We all signed this letter, hundreds of people. Sent the letter. The letter got in the news. Two days later, nothing happened. It was in the news. We called the attorney general. No response. Justin Bieber tweeted. And we got a call right away. Within an hour and a half of his, his tweet. Because it's like, it's going pop. Once Mainstream, it's going pop, man. everybody's going to discuss it. The Jim Crow, the white boys talking about Jim Crow and about the prison industrial complex. We didn't want that to be a discussion amongst people who are not politicized. Because that means everybody will... Focused on Obama not having delivered on a promise. And he really needs push. Everybody needs push. Uh, uh, I think Teddy Roosevelt told a bunch of black leaders, make me do it. Man, get out in the street. Don't be asking me. Don't go out there and do the work. Governor Cuomo needed us to make him do it. What he did for us regarding uh, you know, Black Lives Matters by putting a separate prosecutor in came because we marched. We had 100,000 people in the street. And that's why he did it. He wanted to do it, but he needed to push because he had a lot of opposition. 
I said, look, people are beating me up. I got to do this. And everybody had to accept that he did it. He put an executive order in place. Are you happy with Cuomo? I'm happy that he did that. I'm very happy with that. Are you and happy I, with de Blasio? Um, I, I feel like de Blasio's heart, in the most play, part, is in a good place, but he's not an executor. Um, I'd rather have a good heart in office than, than you know, some of the other people who would absolutely be able to execute things that would be hurtful to the poor. What he said about the poor and how they didn't vote, I thought that was a great comment, you know, about the poor who are, who are suffering in the street, and they say, get rid of them. Like, get rid of them where? And then to say that because they don't vote, they're not treated as citizens, and I'm not going to do that. So you can't really sweep them all off the streets. You don't really know what to do with them. We, we know there's gentrification going on, but there are people who are homeless, and he's sensitive to that. And, I, and for that, they write horrible things about him for not cleaning up the homeless. Well, how you clean them up? Put them in gas chamber? What do you do with them? So he's trying to figure that out, and he has a heart. He hasn't been able to execute on a lot of promises. He still has not stood up to the police department. He did not support vocally the change that Governor Cuomo d made. He knows that a separate prosecutor should look at cases where police shoot unarmed citizens. That's obvious. He came he on our program it. and talked about that. He was open about that. And they say it was good. That. Yeah, no, he was with it. He okay. was one hundred percent with it on our program. We asked him specifically about special prosecutor, and he said it was the right you, thing. You also have to. Oh, good. You know what? He said it to you. Yeah. But you know, you didn't read about it because he didn't really have a press. He didn't say it. He was never vocal about police brutality in a way that I would hope a mayor would be. Well, but he's, you have to understand. A supporter of a progressive they, agenda, a mayor that we put in office. He never did what he promised the the, um, the animal rights activists because they, they put him in office. They came to my house and they brought the gay rights activists, the top ones in this city, and they got together and they said, anybody but Quinn. I saw it. So you should at least, uh, nothing, 200 horses. I got in trouble. They said it was a holocaust. I didn't say it was the Holocaust. And I said to the congressman, the Jewish congressman, I said, if you want to own the word, you can have it. I don't care. We own the word, the N word, it's ours. I, I say it all day. <laughs> you want to say Holocaust like it's only your suffering? You can have it. They I got say, mad at you for saying horse Holocaust. Oh, Holocaust. I, I, I didn't say 200 horses were the Holocaust. I said 100 billion animals birthed into suffering every single year. And the lack of consciousness on the part of humankind to protect them or dominion over the animals to respect that scripture, that was a holocaust. So now I don't use the word holocaust when it re refers to animals. If you ever because... got that problem, just talk to me. But hold up, but real quick. <laughs> what you gonna do? You gonna tell? I got no problem. Yeah, Fox was all over me. He's I don't Jewish. care about him. No, no, in fact, Russell, Russell's way more Jewish than I am. He could, could do way more Jewish. Ahead, Rose, well, just to say, De Blasio, you have to remember, for everything we get disappointed in De Blasio, he gets hated by police supporters like he's the devil. They think he's the most anti-police mayor of all That's time. That's true. So it's a complicated situation to please the people on our side. If he had to run the day against probably anybody, I'd vote for him. I'd vote for his heart. And you know, and and the president just got used to being a leader. Not only because it was his second term, he was free to do certain work. He hadn't right. had the experience. Well, yeah, there's so that. now but that see, experience you gotta, that de Blasio Russell. is gaining... He could be a better second term. Plus, when he stopped be becoming beholden to money, because right. he ain't got no money. So once he, his second time in office, he might get loose, you know, and, and do some of the things that I know he, he has in his heart. Because he got a good well, heart. I'm going to tell you this. That State of the Union last night that you have not seen. I got to see it. Was, for me, and I've seen a lot at this point, at least five, four, um, was the strongest State of the Union. Great. Most direct, most in your face, I think we've seen a president be with regard to not only uh, his naysayers, international politics, um, issues of, you know, um, underclass, issues of minimum wage, guns. I mean, he didn't really go heavy on the guns because just a few weeks ago he had his. Yeah, right, he just, he he just, just, just kind of did that. He just mentioned Campaign it, but, finance. Did he say anything about assault weapons? He's not. He, he it doesn't make guns, sense, but, but no one will do anything about it. Like he's so far away from getting assault weapons off the street, so he came. In his gun policy is light. Let's be honest. I Very mean, people light. were up, people were up in arms about him having one. It's so light. It he was just super light. He the law. But I, That's I, all he's saying. Yeah. He didn't say nothing. Nah, it's gonna it's gonna have for those things to change. It's gonna have to hold, go a whole nother way, and the dem and they're gonna have to get. There, I think moves are being made right now to see that we have that we continue to have more liberal minds on the Supreme Court moving forward. And that you potentially see the amendment change over time. That's the biggest hope. I don't you know, have. man. It's like they said the same thing about Citizens United, but then they just 
reaffirmed it and made it even stronger. So corporations that have more power to pay politicians to do their bidding. Well, look, Russell, so, it's, always, it's always good to have you up here. Um, before we let you get out of here, you guys want anything else we got for Russell before you No, nah, I just want to talk politics. We covered it. We covered it. Listen, you got to see the State of the Union, bro. I'm going to see it today. Got, you Absolutely. have to have an opinion, a vocal opinion on it because he was very direct. He was up there doing He was very proud he of He made us. His agenda and his work match up. And what's going to happen is that we're going to have a legacy. They're going to say, look what he did for the gays. And then 20 years from now, they say he did the right thing for gays. Yep. And they're going to say, look what he did for, you know, health care. And they're going to say he did the right thing for health care. They're going to say all that complaining and all the progressive agendas that we've had throughout the, this country have been looked on uh, by the conservatives as, as, as holding us down or hurting this country or making it weak. But then we always look back and say, that's what makes America great. Well, and it's like a becoming a legacy. vegan. It's like becoming a vegan. It takes work. That's right. And sometimes people don't want to do that early work that it takes all you and that suffering do is see that, that it takes. All your family members with cancer, the family members with diabetes, the family members with heart disease, the family members, it, it goes on and on. And the most obvious choice is a plant-based diet. And this book is an easy route. So that's why I'm just saying, I, again, I'm not making any money. I really believe that if there's a way I can frame it, the discussion, I, I don't think the animal industry likes me. You know, they get thirty you billion, thirty billion dollars a year from the U.S. government to subsidize the poisoning of the people and the planet. And that's what they do with money, and they give nothing to vegetables, mm. and that's horrible. And that's that's our government, you know, being manipulated by money again. So anyway, that's my last statement. Russell about Simmons, it. happy vegan. Get the book. Uh, we're gonna want to hear from you again, maybe after you watch the State of the Union. So I'm gonna I be will. reaching I'll, out. I'm happy to talk about it. Good Thank to you, see you, bro. Russell. Thank you.